Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I am here with a dear friend, an artist, designer, director, educator, entrepreneur, executive, investor, badass, dear sister, Jody Levy. She is the founder and creative director and CEO of a handful of companies, all of which are dedicated to empowering us to be as healthy and as happy as possible. The first is watermelon water. You see it every time you go into the store. Delicious, clean, nutritious. The second is Neuropraxis, which is a coming soon digital app that features neurosculpting modules from dear friend, podcast guest, Lisa Wimberger, who wrote one of the most impactful books in my life. And these modules are specific for overcoming pain, PTSD, stress, any symptoms associated with biotoxic exposure. And what that means is Lyme disease, mold disease, viruses, parasites, more. And the third company is called The Milk Cleanse. And it was co-founded with Dr. Linda Lancaster, with whom I personally have worked and this is basically a detox cleanse product for alleviating symptoms associated also with such biotoxic exposure. It's a conversation that isn't being had, and it is an important one. I am really happy to be talking to you, honored to be talking to you today, Jody, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Elena. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. This is the first time I'm ever really talking about my biotoxic journey. So I really appreciate the conversation we're about to have. Yes, thank you. I would love to first talk about what biotoxic exposure is and define for my listener how you are suited, like duly suited, to teach us about this, your experience with it, and why you went ahead and founded Neuropraxis and the milk cleanse to help allay all of these symptoms that so many thousands and millions of people are experiencing now? Sure. So um, I am kind of an overactive maker. I'm an artist. And as I have grown up and found different mediums, my favorite medium is business. I love creating stories and brands and products that tell bigger stories and that we have in our personal lives. And as I've been busy doing that, creating companies, creating products, working with other people that are, you know, inventing things and helping to tell their stories, I was secretly suffering from a bunch of invisible things, which I, after 18 years of trying to figure out what it was, figured out that it was Lyme's disease and some other tick-borne illnesses and what we call co-infections, which are viruses and parasites and mold exposure and all these like icky things that no one ever wants to talk about, especially me. And you are one of the most private people I know. <laughs> like the fact that you even wanted to come on the podcast <laughs> to me was mind blowing. So I'm really happy that you're here finally getting it out. Thank you. Well, I mean, I think part of it was that, so I had this intuitive knowing that if I could get myself better, I could get other people better. Right. So if I could figure out what worked for me, and now I'm better, by the way, and sometimes I need a tune up. And so I've, you know, like I know how to tune myself up and I know what throws me off balance. But I knew that if I was going through this hell that I went through, which was not just the not knowing, but also this very persistent process of getting myself, you know, well, better, like yeah. fully better, yeah. getting myself well. I knew I was going to help others. And I, I realized that like you walk into the whole, the health food store and 
you see all these products that are accessible, but there's no section, there's no products available for people that are dealing with what I call biotoxicity. For me, it's sort of like the thing that incorporates all of it. There's never just one thing. It's like our body gets off balance. Maybe there's some invaders, but the path to balance, for lack of a better word, is so individual that for me, it's like, okay, well, how do we create that aisle so that there's these different options for people that need you know, help reprogramming or retuning and getting themselves back to baseline or even better, right. thriving. Right. So to define biotoxicity, it includes everything from like microbiological stuff in the body, organisms, parasites, viruses, Lyme's disease, other tick-borne stuff, and exposure to mold. Uh, mold and mycotoxins are, are a big part of that. But I think every person is unique and everyone has their own genetics. So again, you know, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the other. So now as somebody that's an artist who loves the medium of business and is, you know, obsessed with creating products that are interfaces to bigger stories, mm -hmm. I've taken my learnings and now I'm about to bring a handful of these products to the world so everybody else can benefit from this persistent path I've been on. And what's fun as your friend, I watched you go from being, I mean, you were really in trouble. You were really struggling. There were days where you could not leave your house and to watch you solve it like a sleuth and figure out all of the little tools that you've used and then figure out how to actually share them in a viable and sustainable way to help other people. This is a very fun friend to have, my listener. I'm really, ha really happy to be her friend. Um, I want to also mention to my listener as well that I too have done the milk cleanse. I was having certain symptoms. I wasn't sure if I'd been bitten by a tick or if it was a parasite. What I did uh, was the milk cleanse. I did it three times, two, uh, one time for eight days and twice for four. I've never felt better. And I am a person who doesn't eat dairy at all, no cow milk. I've always been allergic since I was an infant. So to do the milk cleanse, which is eight days or four days of goat milk and a proprietary blend of herbs that Dr. Lancaster has designed and now the milk cleanse has perfected, it was a real reach <laughs> for me. But I trusted Jody, and I was really interested in feeling the way that I saw you feel. That's the truth of it. Can you explain to my listener how the milk works in the body, the goat milk works in the body to allay all of these symptoms? I can. Um, so first and foremost, milk mono diets are one of the most ancient treatments. And drinking only milk for uh, wellness purposes has been recorded in ancient scripture, which is kind of cool. Um, and is it particularly cow milk, goat milk, sheep milk, what? Well, we recommend goat because goat milk is the easiest to digest, but you can use any full fat animal milk. So we've got people that, you know, have drank all camel milk, which is supposed to be great for the gut. I don't particularly love it. You know, there's people that get really crazy and they treat it like a wine connoisseur in over eight days. They taste all kinds of things. I encourage, uh, you know, the variety and creativity. I'm a purist. I'm like, goat milk works for me. makes me feel great. It's kind of like the difference. If I drink cow's milk, I feel like that sluggy, like, mmm. You know, yeah, if that's... I drink goat milk, I want to work out all day long. Totally. You know, I've got tons of energy. Totally. Um, the first time I did the milk cleanse, you know, it was it was rough for me because I had so much Lyme and tick-borne um, parasites and bacteria in my body. So I went through it and went through the symptoms and went through the anguish of it. But by day three or four, I felt like I was flying. Yeah, I remember and that feeling. I've since, you know, anytime I need a little pick me up or I feel like I need my body needs a refresh, I do it. To answer your question, the reason that it works is because the milk acts as a magnet in the gut. So you drink milk and only milk and all the unwanted 
microbiological organisms get pulled toward the milk. And then there's supplements that you take every two hours. And they clear out what's being attracted into the gut. So it really uses the body's innate you know, systems to just pull things very peacefully out of the body. And when here's the thing that I sort of struggle to understand, and I know we have to be compliant here. I don't want to get us in trouble. When the combination of the milk with the proprietary herbs enters into the gut, the herbs do the job of sort of eradicating, let's say, the yep. toxins, parasites, whatever. Can I say worms? Yep. I've had worms. Almost all of us do. And then the milk, the milk draws the toxins out and then the, the herbs eradicate them. Is that true? It's true. Okay. And, and then, then you, you take, there's a second supplement that you know that you take to keep things moving through your gastro system. Quote unquote, keep things moving. Moving. Keep things moving. Keep it moving, player. All we do is talk about poop for eight days when you do the milk cleanse. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> I'll spare my listener, but just know that it is the most satisfying. When it comes to the work of, uh, let's say, fine-tuning your nervous system while you're doing the milk cleanse, or if you are averse and you don't want to do the milk cleanse, but you still have these symptoms and you want to work on them in another way, neuropraxis comes into play. And I want to hear how you met Lisa. Again, this is Lisa Wimberger, who's the author of Neurosculpting, which is literally one of the most impactful books I've ever read. And I'm considering her teacher training even. Um, how you met Lisa, how this idea came about, what was the genesis of it, and how you got here. Yeah, so I'm going to take one step back. Um, one of the things that is so annoying about having these health things, I'm, I'm trying to speak generically because I don't like giving them too much power, but get it. they get triggered, right? Like stuff gets triggered. So I figured out what was going on with me a few years ago. I spent the last couple of years doing the treatments that I knew worked for me. And if I felt a little off balance or if I had a stress event that triggered me, so to speak, I'd drink milk for a week, sometimes longer, or you know, I would go and, and do certain things. There's oxygen therapy, IV, the list goes on and on. But the stuff that really was efficient is the stuff that I'm in the process of sharing with everybody. So a few months ago, I was feeling amazing. My physical body was super strong. My brain was clear. You know, I hadn't felt that good in a long time. And I was dealing with some pain in my joints. And my tests had come back clean. Like I didn't have Lyme in my body. There wasn't any reason for there to be achiness in my joints. And I went on a little bit of a serendipitous wild goose chase as this whole journey has been. And I go into it with the combination of open-mindedness, belief, and irritation. Kind of wavers. You've been on the receiving end of that. Totally. From me. Totally. And I went in to see some like some guy who he was this very gruff man who was supposed to be a, a pelvic floor specialist. And he did this like seven minute assessment of me. And he was like, I don't care about your MRI and I don't care about this, that and everything else. And I see how your body's moving and your pain is neurological. And I was like, oh, oh my God, he doesn't think my pain is real. Right. And I'm like, I create this whole story in my head and I'm like, fuck this guy. Mm. And, and then in the course of like 48 hours, I had five things slap me in the face related to neurological pain and phantom pain. And what happens with our limbic loops in the brain as it relates to triggers. And so what I was learning about was there were all these people with what I call biotoxicity, right? A history of Lyme's disease or chronic Lyme's disease, a history of mold exposure or SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, and, and that were having this PTSD experience where they felt like they were still sick, but they actually weren't. 
Which led me to somebody telling me about Lisa Wimberger's work. And, you know, I went down the rabbit hole, found her in like the de- a deep web search, found her personal email, realized that she's like around the corner from me in Denver. Now, I sort of accidentally moved to Denver a couple years ago and still wonder why I'm here sometimes. And all of a sudden, this woman's like next to me. Wow. We meet, we realize we're long lost sisters that have never met before. You truly are. I, right? I know. <laughs> um, we do four sessions, four sessions, and my pain's gone, like gone. So I'm sitting on an airplane and I am pull up my little drop box with my neuro sculpting, you know, meditations. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, gosh, I really wish I had one for anxiety. I really wish I had one for light sensitivity. Yeah. It's, that's a strange symptom that people with Lyme have, but it's the worst. Mm. And in my head, I'm like, gosh, it would be amazing to have an app that we could just send to people that are going through this stuff because the process of neurosculpting is so efficient. So essentially, Lisa's figured out a way to open the prefrontal cortex, connect the left and right brain hemispheres, and then go into a specific topic, whether it's joint pain or even things like immune bolstering or charging the cellular health. The list goes on and on. So she said yes, and I have a design and technology company that I've been doing since I was 21 years old. I called one of my partners from 20, you know, the last 20 years of making things. And the three of us set out in this amazing partnership. And here we are two months later with over 70 hours of recorded content. And the app is about, the desktop version of the app is about to launch. So we, we then woke up three weeks ago and realized that we just created a product for this tiny little sliver of humanity. Which is no longer a sliver because now with the quarantine and with what's going on, we don't even know really what's going on. Um, this is perfectly valid right now. And that's exactly why we accelerated the launch. So we're working out the bugs for the desktop version. Mm-hmm. And then the app, the mobile app will come in the next couple of weeks. But we realize how many people are suffering from biotoxicity yep. all of a sudden, right? So, um, um, yeah. So that's how, that's how neuropraxis came to be. Thank you for telling me that story. I um, I really look forward to trying the app because I think it's going to, it sort of brings together what I love about neurosculpting, what I love about tapping, all the mindset work that I do for all the other work that I do. And I think this is going to just bring it all together into one place so efficiently. What are you most excited about uh, with regards to the, the launch of the Mill Cleanse and Neuropraxis uh, in the next several weeks? Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about is both of these, and there's a third one coming, which is a supplement for binding mold and mycotoxins out of the body and the brain. That has not been made. It's coming. Wow. <laughs> it's called Myco Me Free. Yes. And we'll, we'll talk more about it when it comes. Everything's like on a little bit of a delay now. Obviously. Ingredients are delayed Obviously. and boxes are delayed. Everything's delayed. But I think that all three of these together just allows me to finally like toss it out to lots of people. Yeah. To date, it's been, you know, personal phone calls and me kind of dealing with like, okay, well, ugh, it's so hard. It's so hard to not relive it. And, but I just want to share what I've gone through and I want to share what I've learned because people can use these tools. And so I'm just excited to kind of like toss it out, you mm-hmm. know, into, into the world for people to be like, call their friends who are suffering or yeah. their family that's suffering. Everyone's one degree away from someone. Yep. It's true. It's true. So it's, it's kind of this like, expression of massive gratitude yes. in a lot of ways yes. for everybody that's been on my team through this. It's really such a confusing thing to go through when I've seen so many people go through it and watching you go through it and get out the other side is very 
inspiring to me. There are so many people who really just have no answers. Doctors have no answers. They can't figure it out. And somehow, by the grace of God, you found all the right humans with all the right experience to help you physically, psychologically, emotionally, mentally clear it. It's a real miracle. You know what's interesting, Elena, as it relates to that, for anybody that's listening to this that like has been going through something invisible that people don't understand, the most important thing is knowing, at least for me and for everybody that I've ever collaborated with to help get well, it's their own knowingness of their body that ultimately figures out what the right formula is for balance. And I think that that's true whether somebody has, you know, biotoxic illness or somebody's just living in this crazy world that we're living in today. Every expert or doctor that I've worked with has also been on the patient side. They've also been suffering and struggling with the same stuff. And it wasn't until I like CEO'd my own wellness and realized that it wasn't going to be this button that I pushed to get better. It's more of an adaptation and constant nurturing and hacking of my system to thrive and stay well and strong. And that acceptance of knowing I have the tools when things impact me when the, when my balance goes off, when my, you know, what I call like a history of symptoms or, or like PTSD or whatever it is, right. It's some of it has to do with like belief of how you talk about the stuff. You know, it's knowing that you, you know what to do makes you feel so much more comfortable. So I think the key is like knowing what works for each individual person. And sometimes that's just dancing or, finding like the thing that gets you into flow state and pure presence. You know, I think that that side of it is equally as important. I think what you've just said is the, I mean, among so many other really important points, one of the best points of this conversation, how do we get back to, I talk about this a lot in my business too. How do we get back to the empowerment that allows us to manage our own health care and doesn't give all the power away to someone else, to some, I don't know, insurance company or doctor's office. It really is about our intuition. It really is about what we've experienced. And it really is about getting with other people who've gone through it, hearing their story, learning from them what they did, and then trying that for ourselves. If we turn back the clock many thousands of years, that's how it was. And I think that's the most important conversation we've had. I agree. I mean, that's what I have always loved about Ayurveda, right? The Vedic ancient science of life. I think that to this day, Ayurveda is one of the most profound systems because it looks at the body as a series of balances and imbalances. And sometimes, I mean, most of the time, if I'm really at a lack of like figuring out how to do something, I'll go to the ancient system of Ayurveda and like I can I can get my body in balance. Wow. But the truth is is the world that we live in is so fast. Yeah. We don't have time. You know, like we we need things that we can rely on that can tweak and hack and Yeah, because there's a meeting tomorrow or there's this right. <laughs> And totally. now, now with this experience of being quarantined all of a sudden, everything is slow enough that we could actually try these very slow tweaks and, you know, experiments with plants, basically. You know, what grows in the earth, what comes from a tree. One of the best things that I think, to, to the point you just said, that's happening right now in the world, is the way that we're appreciating the quality of time. In a lot of ways, I think a lot of people are struggling with the construct of time right now because there's so much of it. And so many of the creative people are, you know, sharing their expressions and coming up with ideas and trying to find outlets and other people are finding ways to move their bodies that they maybe weren't before. 
But as it relates to meditation and neuropraxis modules and this kind of mindfulness and making space and time to do things that we don't always make time for, there's like a real presence in it and a real quality of that presence that I think a lot of people are really starting to appreciate. And then there's a whole crew of us who I've mistakenly overscheduled myself and now I'm taking things off my plate <laughs> because I've always worked from home. But I see what you're talking about. I see it in my kid. I see it in James, who's like just learning tons right now. And I too, just in hearing you say that, am reminded to continue the quest for taking little things off my plate and enjoying the quality and the length of the days even a little bit more than I have been. So thanks for that. Yeah. I'm like you too. I I'm, I keep myself very busy. Yeah. And I really, in this time, am reminded of how when I was going through the kind of silent suffering I was going through, I just kept myself busy through it. I was just like, I'd make new things or I'd you know, get involved with something because I just wanted to, it was my lifeline. And I see myself doing that a little bit right now too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where it's like, okay, you know, what, how do what, I help? What's next? What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> who, exactly. Who needs me? What, you know, it's, it's almost selfish. And I think it's time for, I think it's time to do what you said, really enjoy the time and, and um, do what we can, obviously, to serve and get this good work out in the world, but not fill every single hour. That's true. Yeah. Anything else you would like to, add, talk about, ask, say at this time? Hmm. No, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to tell this story. I think that, like I said a little earlier, everybody's connected to somebody that's dealing with what I dealt with. And I feel like in some ways I'm ending this chapter by bringing all these things into the world which I'm, I'm really excited about. I think that it'd be easy to see this as the beginning of something, but I'm actually looking at it as the completion of this really hard but exciting adventure that I was on. Right. And I think it's also a testament to how when things are really hard, mm. there's usually something that comes out of it that's positive. Always, I think. Not even usually. Yeah, I think always. It's a hard perspective to have right now based on what's going on in the world, mm. which is why I soft, soft pedal it a little bit because it's really hard to make sense of what we're all dealing with right now. The, the coffins in the Bronx. Yeah. I mean, I have three questions that I usually ask all of my guests most of the time, and I just want to ask one of you today because of who you are to me and how you stand amongst our friends. Jody's the one who's always with ready with a prayer, a bundle of sage. Like you think from listening to this podcast that she's this completely badass business person, but guess what? She's also this totally prayerful, witchy, delicious sister. What does prayer mean to you? To me, prayer is the space between worlds and the language of communication. And I think that that language is different for every single person. And so when you can connect the different dimensions that exist in the universe that we live in and find the voice or the tone between them, that's where prayer lives. And it's the intention and the belief that lives in that connective tissue where we are able to be. And when I say be, that's the pure presence of existence. The connective tissue is pretty great. <laughs> I've never, ever heard it 
thought about or talked about like that. That's a really, that's one to chew on for me, for sure. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. I love you very, very much. Thank you so much for teaching us today and for being here today. And I can't wait to uh, to revisit this because I know there's going to come more from you. And I, I look forward to learning everything alongside you for the rest of my days. I love you so much. I and more too. than anything, you know, you were one of the people, the few people that were by my side during the worst of the worst. And you kept my secrets quiet and you showed up always. And for that, I am eternally, eternally grateful. Mm, love you, sister. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for being here. Yeah. Bye, honey. Bye. Bye.